Hello and welcome to the weekly Free Jacks Corner. I'm Dallin Stanfield, World Rugby and Major League Rugby commentator. With me is head coach Scott Matthew. Scott, firstly, how are you doing? How's the family keeping, especially little baby Jackson? Uh, all good. Thanks, Dallin. Good morning. Um, it was a rough one last night, but uh, nothing uh, coffee can't make right. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Now, let's, let's touch on the busy travel schedule. You know, the players and you have a full week of training. Then you go away for their away games. You travel on a Friday, play Saturday, travel on a Sunday. You know, so how are you managing the workload with all that jet setting? Yeah, look, we've been, we've been really intentional about um, just making sure we get our, our timings right in the week and our, and our training load and the amount of time we, we're on feet. Um, and so, so most Mondays is really we're just doing recovery and very light install and that's walking at, at most. So um, we've just managed it like that. You know, we know there's a massive impact with travel, massive impact with just six travel games on, or five, six travel games on, on back to back. So we just got to be really careful about what we do and what we pack into a week on the, on the front end, you know. Yeah, people don't realize also the big differences in, in geography here of traveling. When you go from one coast to the other, three-hour time zone change and a six-hour flight. Oh, it's, 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 it's crazy, you know. And then it's just all the little time in between too, you know, the bus to the airport and the bus from the airport. I mean, there's always traffic in the big cities too. So you've got to factor all that in. And then getting back, you know, if you fly from LA to Boston, I mean, you're flying at 10, but you're landing at 6 p.m. in the evening, which means you have so much time uh, left to recover, and it's a, it's a, it's it's a bit of a nightmare for us coaches because we having we have to get all our work done on that plane and make sure it's all sorted because the next day we have to install and 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 get the plan ready for the next week. So uh, a lot of coffee, a lot of hard work, and a lot of uh, meticulous planning is probably what kind of helps us prepare best as players. Well, the, the good thing when you get home, you can sleep you know all night long. You don't have a little one running around. <laughs> Scott, listen, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so something different for this week. I figured, you know, it was an amazing top of the table uh, clash, you know, against the ATL, a blockbuster fixture for you guys. I want to go through the match highlights. I want to get your take. Things that worked, things didn't work. So I want you to talk over uh, what I'm going to pop on the screen next. Perfect, man. So, yeah, this was, uh, I think, Atlanta's uh, first try. They... Uh, Obviously, looked to, to Maul. It came off the top unexpected. But what happened was they actually got into us and got really quick ball. We struggled to get our fold right, which meant we were pretty much scrambling and put the outside backs under pressure. Um, and that meant that, um, you know, one step inside and they ended up scoring there. So uh, it's just not being able to slow down that, that, that first initial ball. This was a Leroux Merlin's try. It was a four man. Their tight head was at the back of the line out. Their hooker was over chasing. And uh, LaRue would manage to really find that transition space there. It was a great line from him, um, but, but, uh, and he took that uh, opportunity really well. And a little send out to Terrell too, which was great. Um, again, Atlanta from the set piece. They, uh, they, had, they just had a, a really, uh, we thought we had a dominant collision there to enough to slow down the ball and, and, and make it a, a difficult uh, second phase. But again, they were just got too much momentum in us in the, second, in, the, in, the, in the first half. I mean, all their carries getting meters, getting meters, and, you know, that puts your defense on the back foot. You can see there our spacing close to the ruck is really too tight, and we just don't, um, we don't come up together in, our, uh, in the line, and which means there's a little space on, on the tip pass, uh, and they get into us. And once they're behind us, you know, Atlanta's a very good team. You know, they play on top of you. So they get, they get, this, they get the momentum and then they just shift it wide where we're already scrambling and they're able to finish that really well. Here again, they're finding space on the inside of our seams. They're getting momentum again. Every carry is getting gain line and it's hard to recover defensively. We get too tight. And now you can see we've got no fold. Uh, from that ruck, we are at sixes and sevens, and we just we're just trying to re recover now. You know, um, I think this was just before. It was just thirtieth minute. Yeah. Again, we come up pretty well there, and you know we we survived that collision. But uh, like uh, the biggest thing from the first half was just that we just weren't slowing down their ball enough at the breakdown, um, and. <laughs> It was kind of a, a fortunate occurrence that, you know, we put two defensive phases together and we can see what, what, what can happen with our line speed. You know, we were able to get up in their face and uh, Mitch Wilson just made a really great read to, to score that try, but it wasn't uh, ideal scenario. 
this was just before half time. It was really gutting to concede this so late. I think it came from a, a Stan van den Hoven uh, kick downfield, which we wouldn't really have done uh, usually. That would have gone to a back and we have kicked it out. I and mean, I think we would have backed ourselves to survive the last 60 seconds from a set piece line out. Um, I think we had just defended 10 phases or so, and then we had kicked it downfield and they come back at us. And I could already see the players were, were dead on their feet. You can see here. You know, we, we're pretty stuffed. Um, and they're just going phases and phases uh, just before the halftime break. And uh, ultimately, again, we are a bit short on the, on the, on the outside. Uh, missed tackle and uh, they're able to score just before the half. So not a great first half. We weren't, we weren't pumped about that. We, we, had, we had a few um, choice words to say in, in, at halftime, which just put us back on track. Um, it didn't really pay off because they they got the 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 first one from the from the start of this this half. So again, Atlanta going through the phases. I thought they defended pretty. We defended pretty well on the outside channels when we when we were able to get width. Um, so they just moved the ball a bit too much on us, and we we, we just struggled to get, to get get that ball slowed up at that breakdown. Again, we missed someone in the line. Stan van den Hoven uh, doesn't stand the line there, um, so we just we just our organisation probably wasn't best there. We didn't get our spacing right, and um, they were able to expose that. I think good teams do that. So yeah, it's been, we started getting things back on track. Uh, we brought the bench did really well coming on. Uh, this was a set, a set piece play. Um, so we looked to more. We got our wing in the front. He gets into the break. Breakdown. Uh, our two goes onto the blind, uh, which sells the dummy, which keeps their nine there. And then Slade McDowell just has to uh, move out onto their uh, scrum off and, and uh, the guy who's defending at the back of the line out and then obviously open up the space for Harry Barlow. I think really important there also is to see that Larue Malone's um, line on the outside. This is just a quick tap. I thought it was great at the moment. You know, we just uh, had a lot of possession and I, I felt that they were on the ropes. Um, so the quick tap and then keep the face play going, I think was, was re a really good decision. We started carrying with a lot more impetus in the second half. You can see our carries have a lot of weight. We, we, um, we're cleaning out and really adding value uh, on the person that uh, the guys that are um, around the, the ball carrier. Um, but every carry has just got a bit of fizz on it and we're running onto the ball, which is important. And ultimately, if you go through a lot of phases, you're going to get them all tired. That you can see, they corner flagging as a defence, and Wayne van der Bank picks that up. He's able to step off, step off, step off his inside foot, and and, and take that uh, space. But that's just from uh, just phase pressure, you know, where you'll get those opportunities. And this was just a great, uh, you know, we had a, a, a 50 22 from from a turnover, which Larue Milan kicked downfield. We got a, a line out, and I think this was a nail in the coffin. We were able to really. Um, apply more pressure you can see some of the backs joining there whether that uh, was whether it was them that they like to claim that they, they uh, added the extra impetus that to score that try um, I'm not too sure given their technique there but um, yeah fantastic stuff Scott just great to get you inside there and just it was such an exciting game I was very impressed with those last 25 minutes as you mentioned you know bench players coming on and 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 scoring 20 unanswered points against ATL in my commentating days I've never seen that so so that was really great okay let's talk about this coming weekend Free Jacks are now the Eastern Conference leaders. You guys head home for two weeks. Can you preview the upcoming April 2nd game against Nola Gold? Nola are, are an accomplished team. I think they've, they've been unfortunate in the, in, in the first half of the season, but they are a hardened team. They've got, uh, they've got a side that's been together for a long time. They know each other very well. And, they, and they're really physical. They, uh, I've been impressed by them. So uh, I'm under no illusions as to what they bring and, and what's coming this weekend. You know, they set pieces very strong. They have a, uh, they have a very well-functioning line-out and they're more really well. Uh, their scrum's also good. So we just got to be really be on top of our game this weekend. You know, we can't, we can't afford to let any of this stuff go to our heads. You know, it's, it's, it really is game for game for us. So I think it's going to be a cracker. I think they're going to bring a lot. It's going to be a real physical battle. I think it's going to be a good one for, for, for people to watch this one.
Yeah, let's talk about that. So the fans are coming out. They'll be packing Veterans Memorial Stadium for the Apres Ski Festival as well. There'll be some great attire. Tickets available at freejacks.com. Kickoff is 4.30 Eastern. And of course, a new competition I see. There'll be a jacuzzi on the side of the field where three people will be sitting in watching the Freejacks play pitch side. Now, is that an inspiration? Because I've seen this at the, the Sharks uh, Stadium in Durban. That, that's something that you must have brought to the table here. <laughs> I don't know about the inspiration for the players, but whoever's in the hot tub, I think we'll will be really appreciative given the, the Boston weather. So um, if, <laughs> I think they'll be enjoying it, especially with the cold beer in hand. Yes, exactly. That's right. All right, Scott, listen, all the best for this weekend. We'll see you in Quincy. It's going to go off like a frog in a sock. Awesome. Thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it, man.